Today we're going to learn how we can apply grain texture shading to an object in Inkscape. If you happen to watch my previous video about creating a splatter brush in Inkscape, we'll actually be following a lot of the same steps in this video, such as using the noise fill filter and the trace bitmap dialog. Okay, so we can pretty much use this technique on any kind of shape we want, but let's see how we can use it on a circle to give it a 3D look. First, let's switch to the circles and ellipses tool here, hold control and create a circle. And we can give it any fill color we want, as long as it's not completely black or white. Also, if your circle happens to have a stroke around it, you can turn it off by holding shift and clicking this red X down here on the left. Next, we want to switch to the select tool and duplicate the circle with control D. We're going to use this duplicate to add a shadow to the bottom right of the other circle. To do this, we want to give it a radial gradient, going from fully transparent at the center to black at the edge. So first, let's give it a black fill. Then let's open the fill and stroke dialog with this button up here. And in the fill tab, let's click this button to give it a radial gradient. The default is to have it go from opaque in the center to transparent at the edge. So we need to reverse this, which we can do by clicking this button in the fill and stroke dialog. Okay, let's duplicate again with Ctrl D and make this one any color. Now let's grab this circle and move it up and to the left a bit. Then let's hold shift and click the circle under it to add it to the selection. Let's go up here to the path menu and choose difference. This leaves us with this crescent shape here. Now we actually want to adjust the gradient of this a bit. To do this, we can use the gradient tool located here. First, I'll grab this stop on the right and rotate it down here. And I'll stretch the other stop out a bit more. We can zoom in by holding down the control key and scrolling up the mouse wheel. That should work. We mainly want the inner edge to be the most transparent part. Okay, next we're going to give this shape a grainy texture. For this, we can use the noise fill filter which is located under the Filters menu in the Overlays category. Let's go ahead and check Live Preview. Alright, so first we want to have the Turbulence Type here set to Fractal Noise. And if we go to the Noise Color tab, we want to have all of the channels set to 0. Now if we go back to the Options tab, we can adjust the other settings here for different results. We want to keep Dilation and Erosion pretty low though. I kind of like how this looks, so I'll click the Apply button and close out the dialog. And we can still adjust the gradient a bit if we want. Okay, so at the moment, the noise fill filter is actually superimposed on the shape. And if we zoom in and out, we can see that the filter changes. What we want to do is vectorize the shape and the filter together using the Trace Bitmap dialog. Trace Bitmap, however, only works on images. So we need to turn these into a bitmap image first by going up to Edit and choosing Make a Bitmap Copy. Now we have a bitmap image copy of the shape and its filter. Let's keep it over here for now. Next we're going to vectorize this image with trace bitmap. So let's open the trace bitmap dialog by going to path, trace bitmap. Now we can adjust the threshold setting here until we like what we see in the preview. Okay, I think that should work. So I'll click the apply button. And now I have a vectorized tracing of the image. We can delete the image now and the shape with the filter. To align the tracing with the circle, we can select the tracing, hold shift and click the circle, then open the align and distribute dialog with this button up here. Click this button to align the right edges, and this one to align their bottom edges. We actually want to work on the shading a little more. First, let's add some reflected light to the outer edge here. To do this, we can use a radial gradient again. So first, let's deselect everything by clicking an empty area in the canvas, then select just the tracing path, Go to the Fill and Stroke dialog and give it a radial gradient fill. Now let's switch to the Gradient tool. Now move the center stop over here a bit. Rotate the right stop down here. Then let's double click the gradient line about right here to add a new stop. Let's raise the alpha channel of this stop all the way up. We can also drag this stop up here out a bit more. Let's also add a stop about right here and lower its alpha channel some. Alright, so the shading is a bit too strong at the moment, 
So let's lower the opacity of the entire path some. To do this, we can switch to the Select tool, deselect the path, select it again, and bring down the opacity at the bottom of the Fill and Stroke dialog. Next, we'll follow similar steps to add a highlight to the top left of the circle. First, let's select the circle and duplicate it with Ctrl D. Let's make it black, then let's hold Shift and Ctrl and scale it down a lot. Now let's give it a radial gradient. But this time we'll leave it opaque at the center. Now let's apply the Noise Fill filter by going to Filters, Overlays, Noise Fill. I'll just leave it on the same settings, click Apply, and close it out. I'm going to scale this up a bit more while holding Shift and Control. Okay, let's create a bitmap copy by going to Edit, Make a Bitmap Copy. For some reason, this doesn't always work the first time, so let's try it again. There we go. Now let's switch to the Trace Bitmap dialog. I think it looks pretty good with the current settings, so I'll click Apply. Now we can move the tracing out of the way and delete the other two objects. Let's put the tracing where we want it, resize it if necessary, make it white, give it a radial gradient, and lower the opacity a bit. Okay, so that's how we can apply grain texture shading to objects in Inkscape. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next lesson.